Mobile G-Sync is here. A shocking development to anyone who wasn't paying attention four months ago when our bros over at PC Perspective did an in-depth analysis of the rumored hacked G-Sync driver, including a physical teardown to find out if there was secretly a G-Sync module inside making it work. Spoiler alert, there wasn't. So then how does mobile G-Sync work and is it even any good? Stay tuned, because we'll be using the Sager NP9773 gaming laptop to find out. Oh, and mash the thumbs up button below if you'd like to see us take a closer look at how 128 gigs of quad-channel DDR4 affects performance with an 18-core CPU. FreshBooks is the online accounting service for small business owners that gives you the tools to make you feel like the boss you are. Click on my face to learn more about it. So let's start with a tour of the laptop we're checking out today. The word of the day is incredible. The Sager NP9773 is incredible. It's incredibly fast, has an incredible amount of IO, is incredibly large and heavy, and this is really incredible, features a desktop processor for incredible mobile performance. That's right, the NP9773 puts the desktop in desktop replacement with a full LGA1150 Core i7 4790K quad-core hyper-threaded processor at its heart, one that impressively managed to run for me at full 4.2 gigahertz turbo under a multi-threaded CPU only workload, even on a soft surface like a bed, albeit at a slightly uncomfortable 90 degree CPU temperature. Our model is equipped with 16 gigs of dual channel RAM, a 128 gig M.2 SSD, and a one terabyte hard drive, but it can be configured with up to 32 gigs of RAM, up to two M.2 SSDs, and up to two two and a half inch hard drives or SSDs in pretty much any capacity. It's got an Intel 7265 2x2 AC wireless card and a GTX 980M 8 gig graphics card, the best GPU you can get for a laptop. The rest of the specs aren't configurable, so on the left you've got Gigabit Ethernet, three USB 3.0 ports, an SD card reader, and an eSATA port. That also doubles as a USB 2.0 port, by the way. On the right is a final USB 3.0 port, headphone, line-in, microphone, and optical out audio ports. Then on the back is power in HDMI 1.4a and a pair of DisplayPort 1.2 ports. On the bottom is a subwoofer and a couple of air intakes to feed the rear exhaust ports along with some easy access hatches for drive or memory upgrades, and on top of the device is a simple logo with a soft touch finish that I found pleasing to the eye and to the hand since we find it when we open up the lid on the wrist rest as well. Also down here we find a full size keyboard including number pad with RGB backlighting that supports a number of lighting modes. My impressions of the keyboard are something along the lines of it's okay, nothing stood out to me as really bad or good about it, a touch stiff, uh, the right shift is a little short, but the arrow key layout is good and the breathing or color cycling effects are cool if you're into that sort of thing. There's also an off-center touchpad with separated buttons and a fingerprint reader in the middle, something I didn't know that I cared about until I checked out the Lenovo X1 Carbon recently and absolutely loved it. I actually really liked the touchpad too and I can't quite put my finger on why, ironically, but it just felt super responsive and accurate, even if it doesn't have the glass top feel that I like so much. Moving up are the speakers that don't suck, something that deserves a mention, even though it's a lot less challenging on devices this size than on something like the MacBook 2015 I reviewed recently. And finally, the screen. This is what this laptop is really about for me. Not because it's 17 inch size or 1920 by 1080 full HD resolution is particularly groundbreaking, or even because it's unusual anymore to see IPS monitors in gaming laptops, but because it runs at 75 hertz out of the box when 60 hertz is much more typical, and because it features G-Sync. 
At some point, I'm going to get sick of rehashing G-Sync, and you're all going to get sick of hearing about it, but it is not this day. G-Sync and other variable refresh rate technologies improve animation smoothness in games by refreshing the display whenever the graphics card outputs a frame instead of at even intervals, which can cause lag or screen tearing whenever the graphics card and the monitor are out of sync with each other. So now we've got it on a notebook, and all we can really do is, well, talk about the gaming experience. First, I wanted to find out how it felt out of the box. So at 75 hertz, I loaded up a couple of games that I enjoy benchmarking, Crisis 3 and Grand Theft Auto 5, to see how they did. For starters, IPS gaming really is the way forward. That much is very clear to me now that I've gone that route on my desktop, as well as my daily driver notebook. The slight difference in pixel response times, IMO is worth the improved image quality. And for number two, G-Sync is awesome on a laptop, just like it is on a desktop, at least for now. NVIDIA has already said that they can enable some additional functionality with the G-Sync module in the desktop displays, which presumably on these notebook displays that are running on embedded display port directly to the panel scaler without an NVIDIA module won't be able to do. But just like what I said in my BenQ XL 2730Z video recently, I don't mind a slightly worse handling of some edge cases outside of the, you know, sort of optimal operation window frame rates, since this is the PC. So you can just tweak your settings to get everything perfect in 95 or 99% of cases. So I'll say the same thing here. A quick hop into the game menu to balance your frame rates in that 45 to 75 range is going to make for a great G-Sync gaming experience but it actually gets better. Panel refresh rate overclocking is definitely a thing on this particular IPS monitor, and I got ours up to 100 hertz with no hassle whatsoever. So now we're really flying and perhaps even getting some kind of small benefit out of our Core i7-4790K, however tiny that might be, since it does actually turbo a little higher than a notebook CPU in not very threaded workloads like games, allowing us to get slightly higher maximum frame rates. Which I guess just leads to the conclusion of this video. How is the Sager NP9773? Well, if you want great battery life, go buy a MacBook. Because between the desktop CPU and the fact that mobile G-Sync precludes the use of Optimus onboard graphics sharing to save battery and light workloads, battery life is pretty much a non-starter here. But if you want a mobile workstation that's quiet under light workloads, reasonably quiet still under heavy ones, and is truly as powerful as your desktop, even in heavy multi-threaded workloads, it looks pretty darn good. And you can cancel your gym membership too, since moving your computer around is going to be one heck of a workout. Speaking of workout, you know what works out for you guys if you're into anime? watching on Crunchyroll. They offer the most current episodes of new shows straight from Japan, like Kuroko's Basketball 3 and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, and lots of other ones. We're gonna have to update my thing that I say every once in a while. And large collections of the most popular anime series like Naruto and One Piece. And all the content on their site is professionally subtitled. Head over to crunchyroll.com slash Linus to sign up for a 30-day free trial of Crunchyroll Premium, which gives you 1080p streaming, new episodes of shows straight from Japan within an hour of their premiere, and the ability to stream anytime, anywhere on a variety of devices like your phone, tablet, or game console. If you like it, you can continue your premium membership to Crunchyroll for only $6.95 a month, so head over to crunchyroll.com slash Linus to check them out. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching, guys. If this video sucked, I think you know what to do. But if it was awesome, then get subscribed, hit the like button, or even consider supporting us by using our affiliate code to shop at Amazon, buying a cool t-shirt like this one, or you can even give us a direct monthly contribution. And then now that you're done doing all of that stuff, you're probably wondering what to watch next, so click that little button in the top right corner to check out Video X where I something. Well, whatever. I, it's a placeholder. I'm sure we'll put something there that's interesting to watch. I did. I missed that part. <laughs>